this video we are going to start cardiovascular system in pharmacology which in this first we will discuss about hypertension and the drug that is antihypertensive drugs so normal bp is your 120 by 80 but if the bp is greater than 130 by 90 with risk factor or greater than 140 by 90 with or without risk factor if this is the blood pressure then there is no need of risk factor okay but 1 by 130 by 90 so it must be combined with risk factor then we should start medicine so these are the two conditions in which we have to start medicine clear now coming to the hypertensive drug antihypertensive drug so these are categorized into four categories okay the first one is diuretics the second one is drugs which is acting on autonomic nervous system then ras then vasodilators so first we will start discussion with diuretics so in diuretics the first will be your thiazide okay and two drugs belonging to this thiazide category i have mentioned here that is chlorothalidone and indapamide okay chlorothalidone and indapamide are the two drugs which belong to thiazide category now what is the action so first we will discuss that these two uh, are long acting thiazide okay and they these two have minimum metabolic side effect so these two are good from the viewpoint of side effects now mechanism of action so it acts on early dct okay and it inhibit sodium chloride pump so inhibition of sodium chloride pump will lead to a reflex phenomenon that will increase sodium and s2 absorption okay sodium absorption is not very much but s2 absorption is more increased in case of reflex okay it will lead to passing of concentrated urine because s2 absorption is more and more so urine will be concentrated that is okay urine will be concentrated now and if you pass concentrated urine it means there will be less sodium present in your plasma there is less sodium present in plasma okay all the sodium is also absorbed but it is very less in quantity okay in compared to if sodium chloride pump were acting clear so this uh, passing concentrated urine this means there is lowering of sodium in plasma and this lowering of sodium in plasma will decrease your tone of the blood vessel clear now thiazide have low efficacy and these thiazide drugs are used in mild to moderate hypotension clear now coming to the advantages of thiazide so it has no cns side effects one of the most important uh, advantage that they have no cns side effects as uh, we have found in alpha 2 antagonist okay alpha 2 antagonist have cns side effects it has also less risk of uh, orthostatic hypotension okay hypotension which we have find in alpha blockers it has also less risk less risk of metabolic side effects okay which is contraindicated okay less risk of metabolic side effect is seen in thiazides if you are using thiazides now they have long lasting effects so you have to give once daily now less risk of electrolyte imbalance due to less efficacy because they have less efficacy so they have less risk of electrolyte imbalance okay which is uh, uh, this electrolyte imbalance is seen in case of loop diuretics but not in the case of thiazides so these are the major advantages of the thiazides now coming to the disadvantage so the first one is it may cause erectile dysfunction the second one is it can increase risk of lithium toxicity it can precipitate your diabetes mellitus and also increases uric acid okay and they are also not useful in severe hypertension so these are these are the four disadvantages of using this drug now coming to the second category that is loop diuretics so the, the most famous loop diuretic is furosemide mechanism of action is it acts on thick ascending limb of henle loop okay and it will lead to inhibition of sodium potassium two chloride channel okay transporter nkcc channel okay its inhibition lead to 20% sodium and H2O loss okay only 20% loss of sodium and H2O because of the inhibition of this channel by furosemide and if sodium is less in blood plasma then this will lead to decreased BP here yeah. and this dilute biotics has more efficacy in compared to thiazide okay it is also given in hypertension crisis and also used in maintenance maintenance treatment for the hypertension if see it is used in hypertension crisis but it can also be given in maintenance treatment of hypertension if there is one of the strict condition the first one is that there is known cause of congestive heart failure there is known cause of pulmonary edema okay and uh, it is also it also have minimum interference with your renal blood flow okay it has very uh, minimum interference with your renal blood flow so you can use this hypertensive drugs clear this means known cause of chronic renal failure okay because it has very minimum interference with your renal blood flow so you can give in chronic renal failure and in chronic renal failure you cannot use thiazide thiazide is ineffective in, in, in this case clear so these are the three conditions that is congestive heart failure pulmonary edema and chronic renal failure when you will use this uh, loop biotics as maintenance treatment for the hypertension now disadvantages of the loop biotics that it will increase risk of electrolyte balance okay it will cause electrolyte imbalance it has short t half 
6 to 8 hours so it will lead to poor compliance then it also have high ortho hype orthostatic hypotension risk increases due to hypovolemia there is a, and due to loop diuretics there is hypovolemia condition that will increase the risk of orthostatic hypotension now the third category is k plus sparing diuretics we are using we are discussing diuretics first we have discussed about uh, first we have discussed about thiazide then we have discussed about loop diuretics then we are discussing about k plus sparing diuretics two drugs that is spironolactone and iplerinone okay on 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 spironolactone and iplerinone now mechanism of action it will inhibit aldosterone receptor if aldosterone receptor is inhibited then it will lead to decrease sodium and s2o in blood okay all, all the two to three percent decrease only that will lead to decrease in bp but it has very low efficacy as we have seen here two to three percent only so it is helpful only in mild decrease in bp okay advantage it is used in resistant hypertension for maintenance treatment okay, what is resistant hypertension so any hypertension if it is not controlled by first line of drugs okay then it is known as resistant hypertension so you can also try this spironolactone or iplerinone in this condition the second one it also prevent hypokalemia here yeah. now the disadvantages that spironolactone can inhibit or decrease your testosterone secretion also testosterone and it has very less efficacy so it have unpredictable action so we have completed diuretics in which we have discussed about uh, potassium sparing diuretics that is spironolactone and iplerinone we have discussed about loop diuretics that was your furosemide we have discussed about thiazide chlorothalidone and indepamide clear now we will move for the next one that is ans okay we will give sympathetolytic drug which can increase your bp which can decrease your bp if you are giving sympathetolytic drug that will decrease your bp now you see this is a vasomotor, vasomotor center okay this is nerve rising from there okay this is the ganglion heart has b1 receptors okay and this is your blood vessel which has alpha 1 receptors so we can give drug to inhibit this alpha 1 receptor then that will be known as alpha blocker if we block beta 1 then beta blocker okay and if we inhibit your vasomotor center which has alpha 2 receptor okay so two drugs are used to block this alpha 2 receptor on vasomotor center that is your clonidine and alpha methyl dopa they are centrally acting sympathetolytic drug clonidine and alpha methyl dopa okay we can also give ganglion blockers okay nn nn type of receptor are found in ganglion so we can also give ganglion blocker so beta blocker common beta blockers are atinolol metoprolol and levitalol we will discuss uh, about beta blocker in detail in when we will go for ans alpha blockers are pradocin phentolamine and phenoxybenzene benjamine and ganglion blocker so we will use a mnemonics htn hypertension crisis so h4 hexamethonium t4 trimethaphen h4 hexamethonium t4 trimethaphen and this n4 nn receptors because this ganglion blocker whether it is hexamethonium or trimethaphen is blocking nn receptors so you can use easily by the by this mnemonics and crisis means these drugs is given for hypertension crisis but they drug, these drugs are not used nowadays because it also blocks parasympathetic ganglion okay so action is non-specific because parasympathetic ganglion also has nn type of receptors so these drugs are these drugs are outdated clear now we will move next that is ras we have discussed third that is ans which we will discuss in detail about every drugs in our ans videos now coming to the ras so first you know angiotensin which is alpha 2 globulin it is formed in liver angiotensin tensinogen alpha 2 globulin it is formed in liver and from liver it comes into plasma and when it comes into plasma it is acted upon by renin which is secreted by gd cell and converted into angiotensin 1 and this angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme which is secreted from lung endothelium as well as kidney but more from lung endothelium clear and this angiotensin 2 acts on its receptor that is 81 receptor or 82 receptor but 81 receptor is much in number in compared to 82 receptor so dominance of 81 receptor action will be seen clear and action performed so now we can block AC, AC enzyme okay so the drugs will be AC, AC blockers we can also inhibit renin so renin inhibitors we can also inhibit ATA receptors so they are ATA receptor 81 receptor blocker clear now first we will look for the action of angiotensin nogen on 81 receptor 81 receptors present on your smooth muscle of blood vessels so when 81 activated it will increase rho kinase map kinase ip3 dag okay these three and these three activation will lead to calcium influx and calcium influx will lead to vasoconstriction which will increase your bp and this effect is known as direct pressure response clear now adrenal cortex have also 81 receptor so 81 activation of adrenal cortex will lead to increased aldosterone leads and this increased aldosterone leads will will act on two portion kidney and heart muscle because these two also have 81 receptor so if it, it is acting on heart muscle then it will cause fibrosis and hypertrophy of cardiac muscle that is also known as remodeling of the heart clear and if fibrosis and hypertrophy is occurring fibrosis is occurring then it will decrease your intrastolic volume that will decrease your cardiac output when it acts on kidney it acts on two part that is glomerulus and late dctn collecting duct 
if it is acting on lead dc and cracking dye then it will lead to sodium and h2 retention increased tone of blood vessel okay and this is known as lead pressure response it can also acts on glomerulus okay and lead to fibrosis of the glomerulus that is known as glomerulosclerosis and in if there is glomerulosclerosis then negative charge of glomerulus decreases this will lead to proteinuria so we have discussed the action of angiotensinogen angiotensin 2 on your heart kidney as well as blood vessels now we will discuss about cns so cns also has 81 receptors okay when 81 is stimulated then it will increase adh release and thrust okay that is called polydipsia and this will this too stimuli will increase your blood volume increasing blood pressure now angiotensin 2 also acts on 82 receptor we have discussed there two types of receptor 81 and 82 so when it acts on 82 receptor then it causes, causes vasodilation but effect of 81 receptor dominates so vasodilation is not so prominent clear now angiotensin 1 is either converted into angiotensin 2 or either converted into another form which has 1 to 7 peptide or angiotensin 2 which has generally 1 to 9 amino acid or 1 to 9 peptide like this okay so when angiotensin 2 work then it leads to vasoconstriction but when this 1 to 7 peptide containing angiotensin work then it will lead to vasodilation clear now coming to the S inhibitors so we have discussed about the functions on CNS heart key kidney smooth muscles okay now we will move for the S inhibitors so S inhibitors drugs uh, have pril okay so here inelapril Ramipril, Lisinopril, Captopril, Fosinopril, okay, the most important are Inelapril and Captopril. Now, we will discuss use of S inhibitors. So, first use is in hypertension, okay. Method of action is, is it will inhibit S enzyme. If S enzyme is inhibited, then angiotensin 1 will be there. There will be no formation of angiotensin 2. And we know angiotensin 1 causes angiotensin 1 like this, okay, it causes vasodilation, clear, and it will okay this is known as early pressure decrease in early pressure decrease early pressure effect this now angiotensin 2 is not forming okay and if angiotensin 2 is not forming then aldosterone will also be not in uh, secreted okay this will lead to decrease sodium and water retention this can also decrease your pressure but this is known as late pressure effect decrease late pressure effect clear it is known as decrease early pressure effect it is vasodilation and this is okay now we will move to next angiotensin 1 amount is increasing so it will convert it into angiotensin which have 1 to 7 peptide and this will also cause vasodilation now this is important kinogen so kinogen is acted upon by calicrin converted into bradykinin and this bradykinin is metabolized by S enzyme so if you are giving S inhibitor then bradykinin amount will increase if you have inhibited this S enzyme this then bradykinin will not be metabolized and if bradykinin is not metabolized then it will act on its beta 2 receptor B2 receptors okay and it will increase prostaglandin synthesis it will increase prostaglandin synthesis and okay mainly your prostacycline and this will lead to vasodilation that is decrease in bp clear so this is one effect of s inhibitors now we are knowing that uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs inhibit prostaglandin synthesis so if you are giving non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs with s inhibitor then what will occur overall effect of s inhibitor decreases because this will inhibit prostaglandin synthesis so prostacycline will not be synthesized so vasodilation will not be there okay so this pathway this pathway will be blocked in this combination if you are using S inhibitor with this and aspirin like this ibuprofen here now angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 but here it is there is no conversion because we have given and uh, S inhibitors okay so this will lead to decrease ADH release and also there is decrease estimation to thrust so this will also lead to hypovolemia and there will be decrease BP now advantages of the S inhibitors so they have no CNS effect okay less risk of orthostatic hypotension very less risk there is no erectile dysfunction and uh, metabolic effect which are contra indicated in your thiazides there is less risk of electrolyte imbalance there is very less risk of reflex tachycardia in this you, you there is also improvement in diabetes mellitus complications okay there is improve in survival of uh, your congestive heart failure patient with hypotension okay so these these are the benefits of the S inhibitors okay so they are the very good class of the drugs now captopril and inalapril captopril and inalapril have fast onset of action so they are given in hypertension crisis other drugs are given for maintenance treatment of the hypertension except captopril and inalapril now due to these benefits they are the best drug for maintenance treatment of the hypertension in young patient and non-black patient young patient means below 55 years and non-black patient okay it is also best drugs for hypertension with diabetes mellitus, chronic uh, congestive heart failure and erectile dysfunction. Okay, so these are the best group of the S inhibitors are the best group of drugs. Okay, yeah. now moving to the next some next point, it is disadvantages. So it can cause hyperkalemia, it can cause cough, 
it can also cause severe hyponatremia hyponatremia but it can cause severe hyponatremia if it is given along with loop diuretics otherwise there is no hyponatremia effect so these are only these two are side effects of the s inhibitors okay so best drugs for maintenance treatment of uh, congestive heart failure why so we are we knowing that uh, angiotensin is responsible for cardiac modeling we have discussed okay cardiac remodeling so if we are giving s inhibitor so this will lead to decrease cardiac remodeling then there will be no fibrosis so there will be increased cardiac output increase survival chance decrease mortality decrease peripheral resistance they are best drug for diabetes mellitus nephropathy best drug for proteinuria because we have seen that uh, angiotensin 2 angiotensin 2 was responsible for proteinuria as we discussed it can also be given in myocardial infarction because of uh, decreased remodeling and peripheral resistance it is also used to prevent your scleroderma what is scleroderma so scleroderma crisis means hypertension crisis plus efferent arteriole constriction it these two combined to called as scleroderma crisis next one is can also be given in migraine prophylaxis okay, migraine prophylaxis because if RAS will be decreased due to S inhibitor then sodium amount will be decreased then sensory of conduction will be decreased because sensory of conduction depends on sodium and so pain pathway inhibited then pain pathway inhibitor means decrease in pain now coming to the pharmacokinetics of the S inhibitors so all S inhibitors are product except captopril and lisinopril all S inhibitors are product except captopril and lisinopril okay so most of them are given through oral route because we have to convert product into active drug into liver so remember these two exceptions captopril and lisinopril because you are giving through oral route so onset is slow so they are used for maintenance treatment so there is also risk decreased risk of orthostatic hypotension hypotension because onset is slow now the second is absorption from GIT is not affected by food except captopril okay captopril absorption decreases if you are given captopril is given with food all is inhibitors are non sulfan non sulfanamide all s inhibitors are non sulfonamide in a structure except captopril captopril is a example of sulfonamide okay so because of the sulfonamide nature it has side effects uh, such as hypersensitivity reactions and inhibitors okay uh, are eliminated by kidney except uh, fosinopril and moxipril in this two depend on liver and kidney for elimination okay so as all s inhibitors are eliminated by kidney so so it is a mistake okay so these drugs s inhibitors are contraindicated in chronic renal failure because their elimination is depending on kidney clear now moving to the next point that all s inhibitors are long lasting okay except captopril okay captopril is shortest in its action now all s inhibitors active metabolites are unstable except enalapril okay its active metabolite is stable so its active metabolite can also be used as a drug now coming to the side effects and contraindication in case of s inhibitors so pneumonics is captopril itself okay we will discuss each of these terms now c4 cough and angioendema c4 cough so first we will discuss about cough and angioendema now s inhibitors will inhibit increase your bradykinin amount we have discussed and increase bradykin will stimulate your b2 receptors activation this will stimulate prostaglandin synthesis and prostaglandin amount if it will increase then it will lead to inflammation inflammation will lead to edema and if edema takes place in trachea then this will lead to dry cough okay and this Okay, this is dry cough, which will due to edema it explained in trachea, and due to this there is irritation, and this will lead to coughing. Clear? Now this side effect is uh, started between two weeks to six months after starting of the taking of S inhibitor, and this is more common in female in respect to male. Okay, and if edema becomes severe in trachea, then it can cause respiratory arrest. It can also cause swelling on face, and also lead to angineurotic edema that will can cause death. Clear? So. S inhibitors are given with uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs because it, uh, because it will inhibit prostaglandin synthesis, so there will be less risk of cough and angioedema. Clear? Now, the second that is captopril A, A for anemia, that is mic microcytic anemia because S inhibitor inhibit also S, which is coming from kidney. And if uh, angiotensin converting enzyme coming from kidney is stopped, then this also decreases the secretion of erythropoietin synthesis and that will decrease your number of RBC. The next P that is increase in potassium that is hyperkalemia because S inhibitors block RAS. This will decrease aldosterone and this will decrease your sodium in plasma but increase K plus that will lead to hyperkalemia. Clear? So this is contraindicated in chronic renal failure. We should uh, look for before using S inhibitors in chronic renal failure. The next one is test change. Okay, this is only associated with captopril because captopril is sulfonamide in nature. The next uh, is your Although, although S inhibitors have very less risk of orthostatic hypotension, okay, but a little bit risk of hypotension is there, okay. Uh, okay, so orthostatic hypotension in case of S inhibitors will increase only when you give it with diuretics because diuretics will lead to sodium, increase S2 loss, okay, increase sodium and water loss, 
so there will be hypovolemia this can increase your orthostatic hypotension now this is also a contraindicated in pregnancy because baby lungs and kidney does not develop okay now the next one is renal artery stenosis okay this is suppose this is glomerulus this is afferent arteriole this is efferent this is gfr suppose if there is afferent arteriole stenosis so due to this there, there will be less renal blood flow this there will be less gfr okay and if you are giving s inhibitors there is less gfr okay and if you are giving s inhibitors then what will come then s inhibitor because of uh, the afferent arteriole is undergoing stenosis okay so s inhibitor will not have so, so much effect on this afferent s inhibitor will act on receptors of afferent and lead to dilation of efferent arteriole okay as efferent arteriole has undergone stenosis so this will lead to dilation of efferent arteriole then there will decrease pressure in efferent because of dilation so blood shift from high pressure to low pressure so high pressure to low pressure will block blood shift okay so blood shifting to efferent will increase normally also bloods come from efferent to efferent but due to more pressure gradient more blood will shift to efferent okay so blood shift to efferent will increase and this will reduce GFR further so for GFR further also reduce GFR has decreased here but due to asymmetries more decrease in GFR is seen here the next one is increased creatine level okay so it is contraindicated in patient having serum creatine more than 2.5 now the last the last one is taptopril leads to hypersensitivity reaction that will cause skin rashes okay that is red and in hindi we use uh, for red we use lal word lal so the last word that is captopril l l4 lal so you can remember like this redness so these are the side effects of the uh, s inhibitors now we will discuss about the drug interaction of s inhibitors so s inhibitors if given with non steroidal anti inflammatory drug then efficiency of s inhibitor will decrease because this drug will inhibit your prostaglandin synthesis if s inhibitor is given with diuretics then it will increase risk of decreased bp clear that is orthostatic hypotension may be there the third one is the s inhibitor if given with thiazide or loop diuretics then it will neutralize two effects the first one is hypokalemia okay and the second one is increase uric acid effect because s inhibitor is urico uric nature that means it will increase uric acid elimination so the this s inhibitor if given with thiazide then it will s inhibitor will neutralize two effects of thiazide first one is decrease in capillary that is hypokalemia and the second one is increase uric acid effect clear because s inhibitor will block uat that is uric acid transporter one okay so uric acid will not be resolved in the cell so this will be excreted in your urine so it has urico uric nature if s inhibitor is given with k plus sparing diuretics then lead to increase in k plus amount clear now the next class is your angiotensin receptor blockers and these drugs have sartan such as low sartan telmi sartan candes sartan clear mechanism of action is block at1 receptors and this block is difficult to overcome very important point this block is difficult to overcome mechanism is about same as s inhibitors but they are more potent because it inhibits ras pathway as well as stimulating effects for at1 receptors okay it inhibits ras pathway as well as those factors will also be inhibited by the, this drug which stimulate your at1 receptors the next that this their effects are very difficult to overcome because they form partial covalent bond clear so have long lasting action now all properties the side effect contraindication is same as s inhibitors except three that is they are the more more efficient in compared to s inhibitors their elimination depends on both liver and kidney in s inhibitor their elimination depends mainly on kidney except two drugs okay then two side effects are not observed in this case that is the first one is bradykinin metabolism is not affected so cough and angioedema is not seen in this okay so these two side effect that is cough and angioedema is not seen when you are giving angiotensin receptor blockers now the next class is your renin inhibitor so one drug is alisquiren you will remember like this this is last three word is ren so ren for renin is i for inhibitor means this drug alisquiren kyrin will inhibit your renin site of action is plasma okay and method of action it directly binds with uh, active site of renin okay and inhibit renin directly effects that it will um, decrease ras function decrease bp so used for maintenance treatment of hypertension it also decreases remodeling of heart it also decreases chances of proteinuria coming to the pharmacokinetics of the renin um, inhibitors so given orally so it will involve renal um, liver metabolism if given and they have very poor oral absorption this is very important point and drawbacks are they have long t half very very long t half so action won't stop is associated with increased risk of hypotension so they are outdated drugs so we do not use these drugs nowadays okay side effects same as s inhibitors now we will look some differences between captopril and enalapril so captopril is sulfonamide enalapril is non sulfonamide captopril after food it uh, decreases absorption where there is no effect on enalapril captopril has very less t half whereas enalapril has more t half in comparison to captopril they are less potent they are more potent orthostatic hypotension is more common in captopril less common in enalapril 
capital is uh, active drug and when enalapril is given as product okay now we look for the next that is vasodilator that, that is the last group of drugs for the hypertension so site of action is blood vessels okay this will lead to vasodilation that will decrease peripheral resistance that will decrease your bp and if there is vasodilation then that will lead to increase in tissue blood flow so plasma volume will be less so renal blood flow will be less so ras pathway will be activated as a reflex so there will be more retention of fluid clear now moving to the next that is the drug first drug is your phenol dopam okay this is exogenous catecholamine phenol dopam is known as exogenous catecholamines okay mechanism of action is it acts on d1 receptors which lead to vasodilation in kidney and mesentery vessels clear and due to vasodilation there will be increase gfr there will be decrease bp due to vasodilation the next vasodilators are calcium channel blockers okay and mainly it, the calcium channel blocker block l type of calcium channel there are three types of calcium channel that is l t and n n type of calcium channel is present on nerve now there are two types of drug okay old calcium channel blocker new calcium channel blocker this contains benzothiazepine that is also known as dtiazem and phenyl alkylamine that is also known as verapamil okay this verapamil is the oldest calcium channel blocker new indicates indicu, includes your dihydropyridine amlodipine nimodipine nifedipine dipine 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 new okay mechanism of action is it block calcium channel so calcium channel will be blocked so calcium entry will be less so there will be decrease contraction decrease depolarization clear so this is the basic mechanism of the calcium channel blocker now we will differentiate between these two we will discuss differences between old calcium channel blocker and new calcium channel blocker so old calcium channel blocker is less efficient in action it is more efficient it is non specific in action it is more specific because there are new effects so old are weak vasodilator so they have very less efficiency so they are given for maintenance treatment of the hypertension okay and delta gem is better than verapamil clear whereas uh, new are the strong vasodilators okay so this is also given for maintenance of hypertension and also in hypertension crisis and maintenance of for maintenance of hypertension okay they are the best drug best drug for hypertension in old and black patient in young and non black patient we have seen ace inhibitors but in old and black patient we use this drug clear calcium channel is most preferred for your maintenance treatment of hypertension because it is longest lasting but slowest acting okay slowest acting amlodipine for hypertension crisis we used nicardipine okay it is it has very fast onset of action now coming to the next uh, calcium uh, first again coming to the old calcium channel blocker so this will block calcium channel on heart and uh, both on nodes and muscle tissues okay nodal tissues and muscle tissues so for nodal tissues we know that calcium channel calcium is required for depolarization so if there is calcium absence then there will be depolarize there will be no depolarization if depolarization will not then this will lead to decrease heart rate because sno is responsible for uh, producing stimulation for the heart contraction okay so there will be decrease H heart rate if there is calcium absence for muscle then troponin c will not be activated then decrease in force of contraction decrease cardiac output so this type of drugs is contraindicated in uh, congestive heart failure clear uh, this one more point this uh, drugs also delay recovery of calcium channels from inactivated state to resting state this will leading to decrease automaticity this point we will discuss until when we will discuss in uh, cardiovascular system again okay now the next point that is uh, this can be these drugs old uh, calcium channel blocker can be given in sinus tachycardia supraventricular type of arrhythmia okay this treatment can be better by giving verapamil in compare to in compare with diltiazem now coming to the new they are the best for vasopastic angina because they will dilate coronary vessels that will increase o2 supply and they can be also be given in treatment of pulmonary artery hypertension for dilating this okay so for these two conditions vasopastic angina and pulmonary artery hypertension we use amlodipine and nifedipine both amlodipine or nifedipine okay this amlodipine we have used also here now the next one it can also given in peripheral vascular disease such as renault's disease burgers disease okay such as nifedipine nifedipine is commonly used in this the drugs are also given in subarachnoid hemorrhages okay nimodipine is a drug which is given in subarachnoid hemorrhage why are so subarachnoid hemorrhages causes reflex vasospasm so nimodipine is given to relief from this vasospasm okay now coming to this again so it block calcium entry in GIT muscle leading to relaxation so it can be given in treatment of esophageal spasm or given in treatment of anal fissure okay as ointment the next point that verapamil is highly non-specific because it block t l n type of calcium channel and t and n type of calcium channel is present in cnm so it will decrease neuronal activity so it have anti-epileptic property also here yeah. coming to the new so preterm liver it also given preterm liver that is also known as tocolytic effect okay nifedipine is given in preterm liver side effects of old calcium channel blocker so decrease heart rate decrease your uh, conduction velocity okay decrease cardiac output it will also lead to constipation 
and uh, it can also have CNA side effects such as sedation coming to this so it can decrease your BP it can uh, increase uh, it can cause reflex tachycardia cerebral vasodilation can cause headache that the most common side effect arterial dilator okay arterial dilator can cause your pedal pedal edema okay arterial dilator because uh, these drugs new calcium channel blockers have effect on artery but no effect on veins so it can cause pedal edema okay rarely nifedipine also cause gum hypertrophy because of the destruction of the colonized collagenase enzyme coming to the pharmacokinetics so it can be given oral if there is time of crisis then it will be also given as intravenous route they are mostly repeal soluble so can be given in cns because they can cross blood brain barrier involves lipid metabolism t half for amlodipine is longest clavodipine is shortest advantage same as s inhibitor